Welcome back to the opening of Parliament, the 7th administration. My name is Faraz Patel. Jazakallah so much for staying with us on Hilal TV Channel 347. As you can see behind us, uh, the sun playing a little bit of hide and seek with regards to, uh, you know, shining down on us here in Cape Town. And of course, we have a beautiful setting sponsored by Tafon Forensic Services. And we thank you for staying with us here on Channel 347 on DSTV, Hilal TV. Now, we've seen a lot of changes in terms of uh, cabinet names. Uh, one of them, of course, is the, the Department of Mineral Resources and Petroleums. And I'd like to welcome Minister Kwede Mantashe. Minister Mantashe, good day. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Get it right. It's Mineral and Petroleum Resources. Uh, mineral and Petroleum Resources. Yes. Thank you so much yes. for, for, for correcting me on yes. that. Uh, uh, how's it been so far, uh, Minister? It's okay. The, the changes, yeah. Now we're putting things together. One of the things is that that is new mm. uh, is that uh, we are focusing on petroleum, mm. Mm. Uh, something that was playing second fiddle mm. to other sources of energy mm. all along. Now we're given a task to elevate it mm. to its rightful place because it's quite important for the economy. Yeah, Minister, let's speak, of course, on you know a day like this today. You've been you're a part of many opening of parliaments, many state of the nations. As a South African, you know, this is a moment where it starts now. The work of government truly starts now, doesn't it? The work of government continues mm. from here, mm. and it continues. Mm. Because there has been work of government for 30 years, and we're having a government again for another five years. It doesn't start from scratch every time there's a new government. Mm. With the government of national unity, a number of policies come into frame. Uh, of course, the ANCs would be the one that, 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 that strongly dominates given the numbers. But do you feel that this government of national unity right now is on the right track in terms of really bringing a sense of trust to South Africans? Whatever trust may have been lost, do you feel that this year can bring that sense of trust back to South Africans? We, we had a Lekota last weekend and uh, all the ministers were there. We've agreed on priorities that we must focus on. And that was a good start for the government of national unity. Uh, I don't know the loss of trust. Uh, I always describe South African democracy as a very noisy democracy. Uh, if you do something right, they accept that and uh, shout louder for something new they want to see happening. And we must accept that as the nature of this country, uh, a loud a loud democracy. Minister Mantashe, let's let's talk about obviously your portfolio. Uh, mining. Yes. Uh, mining obviously took quite a hit during the COVID-19 period. It's slowly starting to get its recovery. How important is your work going to be with the uh, mining conglomerates, the mining industry, in terms of making sure that the work, whatever work is, has been progressed, progresses even further. But if there have been uh, maybe a lack of downpours in the mining industry that that is recovered how important is that your ministry going to be in trying to make sure that that occurs and that progression is at the right stage fortunately mining led recovery mm. and and reconstruction after COVID, and the reason for that is that in the middle of COVID, we took the very serious decisions that affected people in many ways whether it is to open up coal mines at level five and open all open cars at level four and open every mining operation at level three and that made it to recover quicker uh, we were actually shouted at as exposing miners mm. but the numbers do not show miners as, as having been mm. overexposed but what it has done in recovery mm. it led the, the charge mm. but mining is a complex sector mm. because it's affected by many factors the first one is exchange rate the second one is the cyclical nature of the price of commodities mm. And when uh, uh, ESCO misbehaves with the uh, load shedding and when the rail line can't take iron ore bulk and uh, coal bulk to the port, mines see that directly and feel it. Mm. Minister, I want to touch on the, the petroleum part of things, of course, uh, the yeah. natural gas. You said it last week from Russia. Uh, that's going away, isn't it? And you, you've been vociferous in terms of the relationship South Africa has with Russia through the BRICS connection. Uh, is that going ahead? Uh, how far are we? And, and talk about the importance with regards to that. Yeah. The reality is that we mm. trade with the world mm. across the board. 
Uh, we don't impose sanctions on Russia because somebody has. Uh, so we work with Russia, we work with everybody. Uh, actually, I would like to have uh, oil from Iran. Mm. Yes, that's how strong I feel about mm. international relations. So we are working with reviving of the of the refinery in in in, in Petro SA. We are working with the Russian company. We are pushing it to be it begin to show us results. We want to see the first plant operational sooner than later. Mm. Then we'll appreciate their work. Uh, Minister, I know that the rand to dollar and obviously the oil prices have a huge impact on, on the petrol pricing within South Africa. Here's a question I want to ask you. South Africans, of course, you know that everyone's strained in their pockets. When is there going to come a point where through, of course, a petrol essay and that deal with Gazprom Bank, where you have a sense of refining, you know, whether it's liquid gas or oil itself, that South Africans can start seeing a little bit of reprieve in terms of petrol pricing. I know there are mm. other factors beyond the control of mineral resource, uh, the mineral resource and petroleum, mineral and petroleum resources. So, w when can we see that we happening? Should take, we mm. must take it head on. Mm. The challenge of foreign-funded NGOs mm. that block exploration of oil and gas, mm. because the only reprieve will be when we discover our own oil, mm. and our people can have control over the price of oil. We don't have that now. We import every piece of oil and gas. Mm. We have deposits that are proven. We must be allowed to explore them. And that is one of the challenges that is thrown at me. Can we do it? Because obviously there's there's Total and Shell that have their vested interest in it. Can South Africa as an independent through Petro SA say we have the ability to do that? You've mentioned state-funded NGOs uh, that are of course coming in and, and having their say. So can South Africa say this is our own and we're not going to be dictated by foreign conglomerates? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not every, I'm not allergic to mm. foreign direct investment. Mm. I think it's part of economic development. Mm. If we have foreign direct conglomerates who want to invest in South Africa, we must invite them, open our arms to them and work with them. Mm. But we should at the same time encourage South Africans to form companies that can compete in that space. Mm. And I think we can do that. Manisa, I want to touch on a, a deal that's hanging in the air, uh, the Anglo-American BHP. Uh, talk to us about that because I know the your department's going to obviously play quite a role given that it is South African resources at the end of the day. How important is it that there's transparency in what happens there and that the communication between your department, BHP and Anglo-American is done in an effective way? That bill, that, that, that discussion has collapsed, mm. it has fallen through. Yeah. And I'm happy about that. Mm because I thought BHP is not the right partner. Mm. Uh, I, that is derived from the feeling that mm. they took African air capital in the name of Billiton, mm. put it into BHP, and actually fired Brian Gilberson within mm. six months. Uh, uh, a competent CEO, they fired him, and we have nothing to show for that African air capital. And BHP was a wrong partner. Mm. Uh, it's not my business to say who should partner with who mm. in the business, but I have a view when a wrong partner comes to our show and say, we want your, your, your copper assets, we don't want the South African operations. Mm. Then that company has a view about our country and is backstabbing mm. us. Let's go to the lighter side of things and let's remember the great man who's statue of course is right there behind us mm. president nelson mandela you were there uh you've worn the cap you've seen it all on this mandela day what would be your fond memories of the late president uh, assertiveness mm. um but very soft and friendly heart mm. but that doesn't mean that he was giving in to everything very hard difficult but friendly to you. He, he has never had an intention to destroy an individual. He wanted an individual to grow, but not nursing it, but tell you the truth and be hard on you. Minister mm. Mantashe, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. That's uh, the Minister of Mineral and Petroleum Resources. Of uh, course, sugar and sugar. Uh, sugar. Uh, I mean, Minister of
Friday, Aman Tashe, Minister, of course, talking to us about ahead of the opening of Parliament for the seventh administration, and of course, just talking to us about his portfolio. Do stay tuned to the opening of Parliament, the seventh administration. We'll be back with more.